Alright guys, and welcome to uh, your 2012 preview of Group C now, going into depth uh, with facts and figures about the four teams, which is Spain, Italy, Croatia and Republic of Ireland, which might actually interest one too here. I mean, I know that I am obviously an Ireland fan to a certain degree, I am English as you probably well know, but like you always want the British nations to do well. And the ones that are actually do situate around you, like Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, etc. So yeah, um, I think I'm just going to jump straight into it now. You all know what's how what happens. If you haven't, if you don't, then just watch like the first minute or two of Group A or Group B preview where I explain it all. So yeah, we're going to start off with Spain, and as you probably know, they won the European Championship in 2008, and then went on to win the World Cup in 2010. Winning one nil in both finals against Germany and Netherlands, respectively. They are currently first in the world rankings, which get updated today. By the way, I'm doing this like yesterday. When the video gets uploaded, I'm doing this commentary yesterday, so they're not actually been updated yet, but they will be updated now. So it could be incorrect. Ahead of Germany uh, in the world rankings. So yeah, um, the average age stands at 27, with Jordi Alba being the youngest at the age of 23, and Xavi being the oldest at 32. Manager Vincent Del Bosque is, I probably pronounced that wrong, is, is Spanish and 61 years old. After playing 312 games for Real Madrid, he took over the reserve side as a manager in 1987 before leaving three years later. He then had a few months in charge of the first team in 1994 and then managed them for a game in 1996. But in 1999, he was offered the full-time job and remained there until 2003, winning the La Liga title and the Champions League twice. He was offered this Spanish job in 2004 after the European Championships, but he didn't actually take it then. He was then offered the Mexico job in 2006 after the World Cup, but he didn't take that either. But when his country came calling again in 2008, he did decide to take it, replacing Luis Arangos, who left on a high winning the Euros with Spain. Del Basque then took that winning momentum into the World Cup to become world champions. The captain stands in goal and has kept a clean sheet in a World Cup final, which is pretty impressive. You know, not many people can say they've done that. And that is Iker Casillas, as you probably well guessed. He made his way up the ranks in the Madrid squad before finally making his debut for the first team in 1999. He has gone on to make... 457 appearances for them and 130 appearances for Spain. Widely regarded as one of the best keepers in the world, if not the best. He has definitely been a great servant to football, pulling off some incredible saves and being a true professional, both on and off the pitch in my eyes. Although I've not really seen all of his career, obviously due to my age. So Now, hold on to your hats because you'll probably shoot me down for this. I, th I think that the key player for Spain will be Fernando Torres. Uh, I can hear you all laughing now, but yeah, he is the top goal scorer in the squad, one of the most experienced players in the tournament, and does still possess the quality to beat Europe's best defences. The phrase, form is temporary, class is permanent, does come to mind when speaking about Torres, because for Spain he has scored 19 goals in 54 competitive games, one of them clenching the European Championship in 2008 with a delicate chip over Jens Lehmann. So Spain are the world, world and European champions, so I would be surprised if they don't manage to get out of the group. I can see them winning it comfortably, but struggling as they come up against better teams such as England, and I know you're all laughing again, but if you remember, England did actually beat Spain 1-0 in a friendly, although they were absolutely hammered, it does not matter. The score remained 1-0 and a win to England. And like better teams like Germany. So although it is very interesting to see that there it is very interesting to see that there isn't actually any youth players in the squad really. Just look at the three keepers that they have taken. My question is, why isn't De Gea going to get tournament experience? I just can't see why taking three keepers who are twenty nine and over, which is Pepe Reina, Victor Valdez and Ica Casillas, and then um I can't see why taking them three is better than say like I don't know, Pepe Reina and Iker Casillas, or Iker Casillas and Victor Valdez, along with David De Gea, who would get tournament experience, because ultimately, Iker Casillas probably won't be in the next World Cup, and, you know, they might definitely be looking at De Gea, who might just be going to a World Cup after not having any tournament experience. But you never know, it's, it's Vincent's choice, isn't it? So, yeah, uh, we'll move on to Italy now. Italia, and in 2008, they were handed a very tough group, France, Romania and Netherlands being their opponents, but they managed to come second, picking up four points. Unfortunately, though, they came up against Spain in the quarterfinals, where they were eventually beaten 4-2 on penalties after holding out for a nil-nil draw. The then reigning champions of the world, Cup, were handed 
what seemed to be a nice group in 2010, but completely lost it, picking up only two points, a draw against New Zealand and a draw against Slovakia, leaving them bottom of the group and out of the tournament, which was quite a surprise, because like I said, they were World Cup champions at that point, and they, you know, they were going to hold their title, if you like, but they didn't. So they currently sit 12th in the world rankings, behind Russia and ahead of Chile. The average age of the squad is 28 years old, with Fabio Barini being the youngest at 21, and Morgan De Sanctis being the oldest at 35. Their manager is Cesar Prandelli, who is a 54-year-old Italian manager with a lot of experience in Serie A, having managed Parma, Roma, Fiorentina, Lise, Atlanta, Verona and Venezia. Unfortunately, though, his honours as a manager aren't that great at all, having only won Serie B with Verona and gaining promotion from the same division with Venezia. So, Italia's captain, or Italy, yeah, it, it, Italia's, Italy, yeah, uh, yeah. Italy's captain also stands in goal and is featured in a World Cup final. Unfortunately, though, he didn't manage to keep a clean sheet like Casillas, but like he cares because he did win the World Cup that year. Unlike Casillas, though, he Buffon started his career at Parma before moving on to Juventus, where he has been for 11 years. In total, he has played 734 games for his club and country, which is an amazing number. He hasn't scored a goal yet, but that's not his job anyway. So, yeah, but more seriously... You have to go back and think about what happened in May 2006 when Italian police discovered the Italian football scandal. To cut it short, Juventus were relegated to Serie C1, which got overturned and they were relegated to Serie B and stripped off uh, of two Serie A league titles. I remember that quite a few of the big names actually stayed along with Buffon like, at, at the club Juventus. Credit to them for doing that because, like, they did. They, um, they did return to Serie A as a, as champions in their first season, but you just have to like, you just have to think that they were like what world champions weren't they? Like Buffon had just won a World Cup and now he's playing in Serie B, so that's odd. But yeah, this season they have just won the Serie A for the first time since that scandal actually happened. So you know the the back the back to how where they used to be and yeah, it's pretty nice to see actually. Anyway, moving on quickly, so I don't make this video 20 odd minutes long, which will probably happen anyway, and bore you to death. Their key player, Daniel De Rossi, currently plays for Roma in Serie A, where he's been all his career, although yet again there is a small bit of controversy surrounding him, because during his, the 2006 World Cup, in a group game against the USA, he elbowed Brian McBride in the face and received a straight red card, was banned for four games and labelled a disgrace by some, some of the media. He did apologise to Brian, though, who accepted the apology, and he did also feature in the final coming on in the second half for Totti and scoring a penalty in the shootout. Now all that aside, focusing on this tournament because all that controversy did happen five odd years ago, I do worry for Italy. They have great players but I'm just not sure they have enough youth to get them going. It's full of old dogs that they need new blood in to help them get through it. So it will be tight between them, Croatia and Ireland for second spot but I can't really see Italy winning the battle. In other words, I can't see them getting out of the group. So, I mean, that's a bit, it's a big call saying that but it's my personal opinion. So I'll move on to Ireland. The, the boys in green didn't actually qualify for the 2008 Championships or the 2010 World Cup. This is only the second time they've made it to the Euros. The only other time they have gotten to the Euros finals was Germany in 88, but they failed to get out of the group stage. They currently sit joint 18th in the FIFA World Rankings with Switzerland. Both teams have the same amount of points, which is quite unusual. The average age of the squad is 28, with James McLean being the youngest at 23, and Shea Given being the oldest at 36. Giovanni Trapattoni is currently the island manager. He is Italian, which is ironic that they've been placed in Italy's group. And you can't argue with his CV. Seven Italian league titles, two Italian cups, one European cup, one cup winners cup, three UEFA cups, one German league title, one German cup, one Portuguese league title and one Austrian league title, plus many other honours. Robbie Keane is the captain and currently plays his trade in the MLS for LA Galaxy after signing for them in 2001. His personal honours stack up with these being the highlights for me. It's got to be Tottenham's Player of the Year three times, Ireland's record goalscorer of all times, and has scored over 100 Premier League goals, which is no mean feat whatsoever. And also for Highland, he has played 116 times and scored 53 goals. Now, you would think that after all that on Robert Keane, I would class him as their key player. You'd be wrong to think that, because in my eyes, their youngest player, James McLean, he has been an absolute star in this Premier League season. At times, it's been impossible to handle and scored some cracking goals. He won Sunderland's Young Player of the Year this season in his debut. 
year uh, debut season in the Premier League. I said season about 17 million times then, which was last season, again, with the season. But it's only really been recon- it hasn't been recognised on the international scene, picking up only two caps. Although I think we should keep the fact that he's actually Northern Irish on the down low because he does seem to get a bit, you know, tense and heated about it. He's, he's, I had to go at Colin Murray over Twitter for saying that he was Northern Irish. He's like, get it right, I'm Irish, but... You know, technically he's Northern Irish. But anyway, um, yeah, for me, he's going to be their key player. But like I was saying about Italy, Croatia and Ireland, I think it's between them for second place. And if I had to choose, I do think Ireland will take it. They have an amazingly strong defence and they do have the quality up front in the likes of Doyle, Keane and McLean. They've got a great manager in Trapatone and I think he can guide Ireland into the quarters and possibly semis. It's a big shout again, but I think they have a great team with an even greater manager. And although you might be like, yeah, but you're saying Italy haven't got any young players in the squad. In Ireland, they've got the same average age and everything, with their youngest being 23. It's the way that the teams look like. Italy look like they've kind of run the course a bit on the international stage, whereas Ireland's players, because they haven't featured in the past two tournaments, they don't look like they've run the course at all. They look like they can, you know, kind of go out on their international careers on a big hurrah, if you like, in the Euros. You never know. It's, it's, all, it's all just opinions at the end of the day. And I'm just giving you my opinion along with some facts. So I'll move on to Croatia. They won all three of their group games back in 2008, but then lost the lost in the quarters on penalties to Turkey. They didn't qualify for the 2010 World Cup, and in the FIFA World Rankings, they are eighth behind England and ahead of Argentina. The average age works out to be 27, with Ivan Perisic being the youngest at 23, and Stipe Pletikosa being the oldest at 33. Slavin Bilic is the, the current manager of Croatia. He also manages Lokomotiv Moscow. I can only assume he will be uh, resigning as the manager of Croatia after the tournament to focus on his club. If you know that for definite, please tell me because I was looking all over for it but I couldn't find it anywhere. His record for Croatia is really impressive. He has won 40 of the 59 games he has been in charge of and that gives him a win percentage of 68% for his country. The right-sided defensive mid... Uh, Defensive-minded playmaker Darjo Schroener is the captain of Croatia. He possesses amazing talent in the fact that he can sit back and defend, but also play in midfield and get the ball rolling to the strikers. He was at Hadrick Split for four years before signing for Shakhtar Donetsk, where he made 187 appearances, alongside the 90 he has made for his country. His very first international goal came against Belgium in a 4-0 win in qualification for Euro 2004. Eduardo, the former Arsenal forward who broke his leg in that horrific challenge with Martin Tyler, will be the key man for me in Croatia's eyes. His skill and the, his skill with the ball and the ability to get goals is apparent in 47 games for Croatia. He has scored 23, scored on 23 occasions, and for the past two seasons has helped Shak Tardinesk to the league and cup double. However, judging by his name, he isn't Croatian. He's actually Brazilian, and he gained Croatian nationality due to him living in Croatia for so many years and not declaring for another country. It's just like Manuel Almunia now could technically play for England, which you know would not make any sense at all. So yeah, I can't really choose between the three teams, but like I've said many times before, I am not going to be a fence sitter, so I will put my foot down and say that Croatia will come third, beating um, beating Italy and behind Ireland. I know it's a I know it's a massive uh, call again, but it's my gut feeling. So, yeah, I'm just going to wrap it up now, guys, very quickly because I've got to shoot off out after this commentary and I should actually be going out now. But anyway, um, yeah, apologies for the mistakes that I made in the last in the last video. I was doing it really late at night trying to get it out and then obviously I did manage to get it out really late at night and I just made some shocking howlers. So, yeah, um, hopefully I've not done that this episode, although you can never be too sure. And like I said... If I had to say, I, I think I think that Spain will win the group, Ireland will come second, Croatia will come third, and Italy will come fourth. That is just my opinion, and I'm I am more than happy to hear your opinion and talk to you about your opinion, like I have been doing on the last video. I mean, you might you you probably will completely disagree with me, but I can't always I just never see it always going the way that like the bookies make it, like Spain, Italy, Croatia, and Ireland or something like that. So yeah, um, anyway guys, again, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe because liking is just absolutely amazing, especially with, I, I say it all the time, especially with all the effort that I'm putting into these videos to get the information, to get the facts, to get it all recorded in such a little time and get everything, again, sorted. So yeah, as always guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you on Friday at the start of Euro 2012 for the final preview, which is Group D, which holds England and France, which should be pretty awesome. So yeah, peace out guys, see you later.